what habit or habits have contributed most to your ability to continue learning and improving your investment decisions in a changing business and financial environment? I would say that, at least in my case, I haven't been continually learning in terms of the basic principles. Uh, you always learn a little more about given techniques, or we learn, you know, I learn more about some industries over time, and therefore maybe I've widened the universe in which I can operate, although more funds narrows it back down, unfortunately. But I, I know more about businesses than I knew 20 years ago or 40 years ago. I haven't really changed the principles. The last change, the basic principles are still Ben Graham. They were affected in a significant way by Charlie and Bill Fisher in terms of looking at the better businesses. But they, but I didn't leave any of, I didn't leave Graham behind on that. And I really haven't learned any, any new fundamental principles, but I may have learned a little bit more about how business operates over time. Uh, and there's really nothing, I mean, you ought to, you ought to, you ought to get a, investment framework that comes straight from, in my view, from the intelligent investor and from Phil Fisher, uh, more from the intelligent investor, actually. And then I think you ought to learn everything you can about industries and businesses that, where you think you have the ability to get your mind around them if you work at them. And, and with that arsenal, you'll do very well and if, if, you, if you've got the temperament for the business. Charlie? Yeah, well, of course, I've watched war on all these decades and he's learned a hell of a lot even the last 20 or 30 years so it, it's a game of continuing to learn and he can denigrate this little frou-frou that enables him to pick the biggest oil company in China or this or that yeah, but those basic principles alone that he knew a long time ago wouldn't have given him the ability to make the recent investment decisions as well as he's made them. It's a lifelong game, and if you don't keep learning, uh, other people will pass you by. I would say temperament so still is the most important one, you, Charlie? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But temperament alone won't do it. No, temperament you, alone won't do it. You have to have the, the temperament and the right basic idea, and then you have to keep at it with a lot of curiosity for a long, long time. But you don't have to be blindingly and you know, have any blinding insights or or have a high IQ to look to look at a PetroChina, for example. And no. you know, it I mean it's a when you get a, 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 a you know, a company that is is doing two and a half million barrels a day, that's three and a half percent of the world or three percent of the world's oil production, you know, and they're selling based on on US prices, you're using using WTI, you know, as uh, West Texas Intermediate as a, as a base price and where they uh, have a significant part of the marketing and refining in a, in a country, the tax rate's 30 percent. They say they're going to pay out 45 percent to you in dividends, don't have unusual amounts of leverage. If you're buying something like that at well under half what, maybe a third of what comparable oil companies are selling for, that, that's not high-level stuff. I mean, you have to read some. You have to be willing to read the reports, and but I enjoy doing that. But you wouldn't say that requires any any high-level insights or anything, Charlie. Well, when you were buying that block of stock, nobody else to speak of was buying. Thank so heavens. The insights can't have been all that common. No, I think that takes a certain amount of what an old Omaha friend used to call uncommon sense. He used to say there is no common sense. When people say common sense, they mean uncommon sense. Part of it, I think, is being able to tune out folly as distinguished from recognizing wisdom. And if you just got whole categories of things, you just bat away so your brain isn't cluttered with them, then you're you're better able to pick up a few sensible things to do. Yeah, we don't consider many stupid things. Uh, you know, I mean, we get rid of them fast. And in fact, people get irritated with us because they'll call us, and when they're in the middle of the first sentence, we'll we'll just tell them forget it. You know, and we we don't we can we can see it coming. And you know, that's the way. Actually, the mind works. There was a great article in the New Yorker magazine 30 years ago or so, uh, a little more than that. It was when the Fisher Spassky 
chess matches were going on. And it, it got into the speculation of would the humans being able to, to take on computers in, in, in chess. And, you know, here were these computers doing hundreds of thousands of calculations a second. And they said, how can the human mind, when all you're really looking at is the, the future, you know, the results from various moves in the future, how can a human mind deal with a computer that's thinking at a speeds that are unbelievable? And, of course, they examined the subject some. And a mind like well, in fact, all minds, but some much better than others. But, but a Fisher Ospasky essentially was eliminating about 99.99% of the possibilities without even thinking about it. So it wasn't that they could out, outthink the computer in terms of speed, but they had this ability in what you might call grouping or exclusion, where essentially they just got right down to the few possibilities out of these zillions of possibilities that really had any chance of success. And getting rid of the the nonsense. I mean, just figuring that, that uh, you know, people start calling you and say, I've got this great, wonderful idea. Don't spend 10 minutes, you know, once you know in the first sentence that it isn't a great, wonderful idea. Don't be polite. <laughs> Go through the whole process. And Charlie and I are pretty good at that. We can, we can hang up very fast. Right? <laughs> well, there you have it. All you've got to do is go at it in the way that Vasily Smizlov did when he was the world champion and of chess and, and just do the same thing in investments. <laughs> okay, microphone one. Uh, hello, Mr. Buffett and Mr. Munger. My name is Justin Fong. I'm 14 years old from California. This is my cons fourth consecutive meeting attendance. I read in a book that you prefer talking to young people about life and financial concepts because we still have time to implement them. Can you please share some of the concepts with us? Thank you. I didn't catch the last part. I, mean, I, I, I didn't. There's something about sharing concepts. Uh, you want to repeat it? Can you please share the life and financial concepts that you prefer talking to young people about? Share. He wants to know your life concepts and financial concepts that are useful to young people. <laughs> well, that's a fairly broad question, but uh, I think the financial concepts, you know, we've obviously spelled out in the, in the uh, reports. Uh, Charlie's probably better on the life concepts than I am. It is true that, that I do believe in spending the time that I spend giving talks or answering questions, doing it with young people. I do, I'm sure, well over a dozen a year, and I just think that, that that obviously young people are more receptive to change or to actually to even forming habits that are going to be useful in life. And I think that people underestimate, uh, until they get older, they underestimate just how important habits are uh, and how difficult they are to change when you're 45 or 50 and, and how important it is that you form the right ones uh, when you're young. Uh, but Charlie, what do you have to say on that? Well, all the trite stuff is what works. I mean, you avoid doing the really dumb things like racing, moving trains to the crossing, experimenting with cocaine, risking getting AIDS or other unfortunate ailments. Uh, there are just a lot of standard things that take people down and you just give those a wide berth and then you want to develop a good character and good mental habits and you want to learn from your mistakes every single one as you go along it's 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 pretty obvious isn't it yeah we would we would say even though we we issue lots of credit cards and I think we'd say if probably if I had one piece of advice to give to young people of you know that across the board it would be just to don't get in debt it, uh, the game plays a lot easier if you're a little bit ahead of the game than, than if you're behind the game. And Ben Franklin said that long ago in better terms, which Charlie can recite. But, but there's a real difference. I get letters every day from people that are in all kinds of financial trouble. And often it's health-related, which is tragic. Uh, but very often it's, 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 it, re it relates to debt. I mean, they get behind the game and they're never going to catch up. 
And often, it may surprise you, but often, I, I write these people, they're, they're very decent people. They've just, they've just made mistakes. And I just tell them the best course is bankruptcy. I mean, they, they are not going to catch up. And they, they should start all over again, and they should never look at a credit card the rest of their life. And, but it would have been better if they'd gotten that advice a little earlier. But it's, it's very tempting to, to spend more than you earn. I mean, I, you know, it's very understandable. Uh, but it's not a good idea. And, of course, you particularly want to avoid evil or seriously irrational people particularly if they are attractive members of the opposite sex. That can, Char that Charlie can knows more about this. Where would, the expert. <laughs> the, yeah, the, 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 you know, it's better to hang out with people better than you. I found that very easy to do over the years. But uh, if, if, you, uh, if you're picking associates, uh, pick out those whose behavior is somewhat better than yours, and you'll drift in that direction. And similarly, if, if, you, uh, if you hang out with a bad bunch, you're very likely to, to uh, find your own behavior worse over time. But all, like Charlie says, the, the trite advice, which Ben Franklin was handing out a few hundred years ago, uh, really works. To, uh, you know, just, we've said it, but look at the people you like to associate with. You know, what qualities do they have that, that you can't have if you want to? Look at the people that you can't stand to be around. What qualities do you have that they have? Can, can you get rid of them? You can do all of that at a young age. It gets, it gets harder as you go along. It, uh, it's, not, it's not very complicated. And my final word of advice would be, if this gives you a little temporary unpopularity in your peer group, the hell with them. And his advice, a little more applicable to me and Charlie, I was reading about a woman that was 103, and they said, what do you like about being 103? And she says, no peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go to number four. <laughs>